the best revenge is uh, shaven cold. Well, a couple of nights ago, a bunch of us got together and it was kind of a farewell event for an organization that meant an awful lot to us. I'm really still not going to mention the name of it, mostly because I had it drummed into me, but I can tell you a little story. Back in 2008, I was running one of these meetings for conservatives in Hollywood, which may or may not have existed. And I was sitting there at the center of a square of people sitting around in a room. And to my right was Andrew Breitbart. And as we would run these meetings to welcome people who might be conservatives in Hollywood, if such an organization did in fact exist, the procedure would be I would say something about myself and how I ended up in that room. Then Andrew Breitbart would say something about how he ended up in that room. And I ran about 40 of these things. But one day in, in, in spring of 2008, we went around the room like this. And when we got about three quarters of the way around, a guy introduced himself as Jeremy Boring. And he started talking about just things. And after about three minutes of listening to him, I turned to Andrew Breitbart. I said, Andrew, I think that's the third smartest guy in the room. <laughs> Generous. Yeah. It turns out uh, he was. Uh, Jeremy uh, has gone from not just being the astonishingly successful businessman who, in cooperation with um, Ben Shapiro, has created the, the Daily Wire juggernaut, which is what he set out to do and is doing, but he has now become uh, a celebrity. Uh, I saw him just a couple nights ago, and he said that the first thing somebody said when he got in the Uber was, you're the razor guy. <laughs> nice. After his commercial had been out for four days, now this commercial has gotten so much attention. I'm just going to show you my favorite 20 seconds of it. It's about three minutes long. I cannot recommend it to you highly enough. It's embedded in uh, the description below this video. But uh, take a quick look at a new product that is being sold by the folks over at Daily Wire. Behold, Jeremy's razors. Yes, they're real. Yes, they're fabulous. But Jeremy, you say, you're a stelt silver fox with a salt and pepper beard that's the envy of lesser men. You're damn right I am. And I want to be clear that shaving with a Jeremy's razor won't actually make you look more like yes, me. you're giving me fierce. You're giving me power. Could make you look more like this guy, though. And that's the most homoerotic moment you'll ever get from a Jeremy's razor commercial. What kind of man shaves with a Jeremy's razor? I don't know. How about cowboys, firefighters, those guys that shot Osama bin Laden? I mean, no, none of those guys have ever even heard of a Jeremy's razor, but, but imagine how much more manly they'd be if they had. I taught that boy everything he knows, <laughs> but I didn't teach him everything I know. No, it, it's an astonishing, astonishing piece of work. But I don't want to talk about the ad. I want to talk about what happened to cause the ad, because to me, this is the actual story. So for those of you who haven't heard the story, Harry's Razors was a company that had advertised on Daily Wire. I'm not 100% sure about this, but I'm practically positive. At some point during one of the three historical podcasts that I did for Daily Wire, I think I might have cut a commercial for Harry's Razors. In any event, they had been advertising on Daily Wire. And then a person with two Twitter, Twitter followers, two, sent a notice to uh, Harry's Razor saying that somebody at the Daily Wire had said that men are men and women are women. And what are you going to do about that, Harry's? Well, here's what Harry's did. Harry's pulled their ads from Daily Wire. Mm. Now, speaking with Jeremy, he says it in the commercial, but I talked to him for about two hours. He said, very clearly, Harry's has the right to pull their ads from my, from my company at any time they want to. This is the free market. They are here volitionally. I don't have any problem with people canceling ads. People cancel ads all the time. I'm fine with that. But that's not all Harry's Razors did. Harry's Razors also issued a statement saying that this kind of statement, that men are men and women are women, is reprehensible and inexcusable, essentially, that it's disgraceful. And we are not only withdrawing our ads from this disgusting and vile organization, now I'm ad-libbing, but this is clearly the intent, but we're also going to look carefully at the people we advertise with in the future because somebody with two Twitter followers wrote to complain about this. And this is what made Jeremy angry, and this is what made me angry when it happened to me. It's not the accusation. It's when people who are on your own side then stand up and, 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 and puff out the chest and start talking about what a horrible person you are. 
That was what he found intolerable. He says in the uh, in a follow up video, he says, if they're saying that it's a disgrace to uh, advertise on Daily Wire, what he's saying to my other advertisers is the only way that you can avoid being disgraceful is to stop advertising on my company as well. So anyway, we've been through this whole thing. Here's the point. Jeremy decided this was so egregious that he wasn't just going to complain about it. He wasn't just going to whine about it. He wasn't going to use it as a fundraiser to drive up membership. He wasn't going to do anything. He was going to put them out of business. He's going to make them pay for that display. And the reason he's going to make them pay for that display is not because they pulled his ads. And it's not even because they did the virtue signaling. It's because they had for a significant period of time paid Daily Wire to advertise their products to these reprehensible people with these absolutely atrocious ideas and 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 had profited from this. So he's basically saying that all of our clients are insulted. The people who, like me, I think me, I've done for other people, put my personal credibility on the line, all of it. He said, no, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to hurt him. We're going to start a razor company. Sorry about the super long introduction. Steve, when I heard this, because I hadn't seen the commercial when I, when I met up with Jeremy a couple days ago, he sent me the link to it and I watched it after I dropped him off at the hotel. And then I uh, saw the commercial and then I texted him back, but it took me about 15 minutes because I had to go and sign up for the razors, uh, which I did. Um, what do you think of this idea of, of, not just not just hitting back in terms of, you know, we're not racist or hitting back like what a horrible thing to say, making people pay. Because the, the, the thing that was so important to me was that Jeremy said this has got to there's got to be a deterrent for this thing happening in the future because it never, ever stops. It just keeps going. Yeah. Um, you know, it's worse than a, than a coward. A coward with moral pretensions. That's right. And that was, that was Harry's in this case. They didn't just cancel their ads because of a no follower, a two follower Twitter account. They then had to make a very public stink about it, mm -hmm. which doesn't just alienate a former uh, uh, client of yours. It also alienates their user base and Daily Wire has a considerable number of users. And I'm guessing a bunch of them shave and use disposable razor blades. Um, and I love this because boycotts almost never work. I can't remember the last time enough people they said, don't. I'm, I'm not going to drink Coke again because of whatever. Coke doesn't notice you. Shut up. Uh, just drink whatever you want. Don't worry about the politics. But if you were to start a very well funded rival to Coca-Cola, maybe that would make a difference. And that, of course, is what uh, what Jeremy's done here. You know, what I first saw before I saw either one of the videos, I saw the uh, the, the 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 kind of the print ad version, I think, on Daily Wire. I was looking for stuff to, to put up on Instapundit. And I'm looking at this thing and my first reaction was, oh, this is a very clever hoax. I thought this was yeah, Babylon yeah. B-worthy for maybe the first 15 or 20 seconds that I'm reading this thing. But as I got it, no, they're really doing this. Oh, this is this is brilliant. I want to get on board with this. However, um, I gave up Gillette razors years ago because they were overpriced. And I, I almost never grow up my beard. I don't like it. It's like this curly, bushy beard. But it's so coarse that it chews through cartridge razors like crazy. I was going through uh, one of those fusion blades that Gillette makes. They, they used to be $4 a pop because of Harry's. They had to drop their prices. But at $4 a pop, I was going through two of those a week. They make them bucks. out of talc. Yeah, eight bucks a week on uh, on razors. So I switched to Harry's and I had to give up Harry's because, frankly, the blades are no good. These are not very well-made cartridges. They're not very sharp or at least they're not very consistent about being very sharp. And so about a dozen years ago. Actually, no, I tried Harry's. Them. Yeah, it doesn't matter. I, whenever it was, I discovered uh, the old fashioned double edged safety razors. I know Scott shaves with these things, too. They're great. You can get them for anywhere from, I think, six or seven cents to 30 cents a blade. The yeah. very best blades cost 30 cents. I get a week out of these things. They're called Feather from Japan. I love these blades. Um, so I'm spending just a tiny fraction of what I used to do on blades. But I'm so in love with this idea of sticking it to these idiot, cowardly, morally pretentious, woke corporations that my 16-year-old son, who does shave, but whose beard has not yet come in coarse enough to require a double-edged safety razor, 
guess what I'm going to sign up for? Jeremy, you uh, made a customer. That's yes, he did. He's made a few customers. As a matter of fact, Scott, I'm I'm very reluctant to 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 say these numbers because I don't remember them accurately. I just don't. But I remember one of them. I forget what it was that Harry's sold in its first year. It might have been two thousand subscriptions, maybe four thousand. I don't think it was more than eight thousand in their first year. I'm pretty sure, almost positive, it wasn't more than that in their first year. One of those three numbers. In four days after that commercial ran, uh, Jeremy's Razor sold 40,000 subscriptions, and I'm sure that number has at least at least gone half again larger, probably doubled or, or, or something like that. Jeremy's point about a boycott is you can boycott all you want to, but you still have to shave. You need a product, right? And this yeah. is the first time that I have ever seen in my entire life uh, conservatives do something that was actually genuinely effective. And by effective, I not only I not only mean effective at getting revenge of somebody who blindsided you. The reason re revenge exists in the first place in our DNA is to deter people from hitting us again the next time. So this is not only an effective way to get back at these guys. He's going to make a ton of money off of this thing. And of all the things in this, I think this might have been in the, in the other video that he did that's also available, and we'll link to that too. He says, we could, we're, we're not asking for, we're not here to beg for your money out of a smaller and smaller group of conservatives, you know, to do less and less and less. We're providing a product that they used to provide. We're providing a product now, but we don't hate you. Or as Jeremy says in the, in the video, we don't love you exactly, but we don't mean you any specific harm. <laughs> Yeah, and in fact, I think that the greatest thing about this is not the revenge, it's the opportunity. I mean, it's a businessman who's looking at it and goes, hey, look, we just lost a fairly substantial advertiser. So that means we have an advertising slot available for somebody who provides a similar kind of service. Oh, I have an idea. I'll start the similar kind of service. <laughs> and so uh, theoretically, at least, Jeremy will give a better uh, rate for an ad to Jeremy's company than he would have charged Harry's. <laughs> So he can advertise still on his same network, provide his customers who listen to those podcasts with the same quality or better quality product um, at a cheaper price for him. And basically, when you see a business that is not only intentionally ignoring a particular market segment, but intentionally offending a market segment, that should scream to your little capitalist lizard brain, hey, opportunity. You can fill this void. There is a vacuum in the marketplace that Harry's just said, we don't want to serve tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands or millions of people. 99% of the population, they don't want to serve them. We don't want to serve you. So therefore, somebody can. So that's what I love about this. I have this little phrase that I've been using for years that uh, that is live the freedom. And it's my reminder that it's not enough to just be critical of people who are doing things I don't like in the political realm, but it is my encouragement to say, hey, you've got this freedom, use it for what it's worth. You live out the freedom that's available in this country. You set an example by what you do with your life. And, you know, don't just talk about the Second Amendment, you know, get yourself a, a sidearm and get down to the range, you know, learn to shoot that thing. Don't just talk about the importance of the second or the uh, free speech amendment, but actually exercise your free speech, not just to attack other people, but to say things of value into people's lives so that they can hear it and benefit from it. And in this case, don't just talk about the beauties of capitalism, start a freaking company. I mean, this is awesome. I, I really, I mean, uh, when what you said about, uh, you know, there's the third smartest guy in the room. I know you were you were being somewhat facetious um, what, that day. Oh, it was deadly serious. What's that? <laughs> that was deadly serious. <laughs> that, that there was a day uh, a number of years ago when you and me and Andrew Clavin and Jeremy Boring and there may have been one of uh, or two other guys sat outdoors uh, in winter in Los Angeles on the cafe uh, at a at like a I Starbucks kind it was of place, freezing. and there were snow capped peaks in the distance. And I was listening to you, the, all of you talking, and I just thought. This is magnificent, and these people are brilliant, and they have not yet realized who I am and haven't kicked me out of this, this little group <laughs> of people out on the cafe. And, and th there are some of the best minds in America, not only on the conservative side of the aisle, but more importantly, business people 
who are actually doing things to make the country better. There will be people who have a better experience in life because of Jeremy's razor, some of whom who will never have seen or listened to a Daily Wire podcast. But that will that ripple effect will go out from there and affect many people's lives. God bless you, Jeremy yeah. Boring. This is awesome stuff. It is awesome stuff. And and it's going to succeed. And it's going to succeed because every time a company buckles to the pressure to do something woke, they go broke. But when they stand up, they do big business. My pillow is a great example. What were the was it what were those wasn't it beans or something? Goya somebody's beans or something they said we're not going to be pressured into making this left wing thing and they quadrupled their sales overnight. Oh uh, Goya. Goya. So for those of you familiar with the with the firewall videos that I've done, we did firewall when uh, when I left PJTV and I went into business with Jeremy Bourne, made a company called Declaration Entertainment. It was just the two of us, rented an edit bay and he had the room next door, which was a small office. And then we did a number of videos working together like that. So I know this guy really well. And I have watched him grow that business from the two rooms that we had, went our separate ways. He met then, and then it was four rooms, then it was the floor, then it was the building, then it was a bigger building, then it was a move to Tennessee, and so on and so on and so on. He has done something that I continually look at in absolute awe. He's paid me to write for him, but more importantly than that, he has made an empire out of out of this kind of thing. His business sense is extraordinary and his and his eye for opportunity is unmatched. When Gina Carrera was fired from um, from uh, the Mandalorian at Disney because she also made an outrageous comment about something along these lines, you know, like I think a woman is, is a woman, something along those lines. You, oh, you must be uh, excommunicated. So Disney fired her off the Mandalorian. Jeremy hired her the next day. Her movie for Daily Wire will be coming out in a couple of months. Looking forward to seeing that. Uh, on a personal level, Jay, uh, it, it's just inspired. The commercial is inspired. Everything about it is inspired. I'm proud to know you. I'm proud to be associated with you. And 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 I told you when you launched the first lawsuit in the Supreme Court to to question the vaccine mandate that I'd never been more proud of you, but I'm more proud of you now than I was then, and I was awful proud of you then. This is, this is exactly how you win. You not only get back at these people, you get rich doing it, and you, and you show people that there are consequences for defaming you. And the best revenge is uh, shave and cold. For Steve Green and Scott Ott, I'm Bill Whittle. We'll see you next time right here on Right Angle. 